Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the fifth video of the Golang URL shortener project series. In this video, we're working on the shorten.go file. And in the previous video, we had worked on our validator function, which are uh, and our remove domain error function and enforce HTTP. Uh, these are in the helpers uh, package that we had created. In this video, uh, you want we want to create some space here after the enforce HTTP function that we have called and we want to write some code here Now the code that we'll write here uh, will be a little interesting so uh, let me first explain it to you so that you understand it really well before we start implementing it now in our uh, program in our uh, URL shortening program we want to give a functionality to the, to the user so that he can create his own shortened link so sometimes what happens is that when you go uh, to shorten a URL you want this shortened URL to look in a certain way so that you can remember it more easily. You want it to be a particular, uh, you know, uh, like type of characters, A, A, W, X, Y, Z or something like that. Or you want to call it something uh, on your own. So that's called as a custom URL shortener. Now, um, we want to give that functionality in our uh, program where the user can suggest that this is the, the final shortened URL that I want it to be. So uh, to be able to do this, what we need to do is we need to accept this from the user. We need to accept that custom uh, URL string that he's sending uh, to us. We need to accept that first. Secondly, we need to check if somebody, some other user has already used that shortened uh, URL link, <clears throat> right? So let's say you suggest that I want the shortened URL link to be AWXYZ, but somebody else has already used it. So it's already there in our database that for this uh, shortened URL, this is the actual URL for which I have to redirect in our database. So it won't work, right? And uh, so the first thing, again, I'll repeat is we need to check if the user has sent us uh, any custom URL shortener link. Second, we need to check in our database if some other user has already used this kind of a shortener URL link. The third thing is if uh, the user has not sent us anything like this, then we need to create a new uh, ID or a URL ID for him. A random ID will be generated using UUID, right? Which is the standard function of any URL shortening service, which creates a new random uh, shortened URL ID for you. So these three things is what we'll do right now in this video. Okay, so let's get started. <coughs> Firstly, I'll define uh, an ID called string. Sorry, I'll define a string called ID. And it's a variable. And in the body, you want to check if somebody has sent the custom short. If it's equal to zero, right? If there is no custom short, then you don't know what to do. You want to create a new ID using UUID package. So you'll say ID is equal to UUID dot new dot string. Okay. But if somebody has sent it, then you want to run the else part of the code and you want to say ID will be equal to body dot custom short. So here you'll come here, you'll create R, which will be database dot create client. <clears throat> and once you create the client, you want to close the client also at the end. So you'll defer R dot close. And here you'll check uh, in your database if somebody's already using that custom URL shortener. So you will take a variable call value and you'll say r.get. So you know that for uh, Redis, there are two things that we get access to. One is the get function, the set function. Now the get function gets something from the database. So what do you want to get? You firstly, you want to pass the database.context to be able to get anything. Then you want to pass the ID. So ID is, is uh, either the uh, custom shortened URL link that the, the user is sending or it could be the new ID that's generated. So for both, we are checking in our database <coughs> if it always exists or not. So we'll come here and we'll say if value not equal to M2. This means if value is not equal to M2 means that uh, something was found in the database, right? When we ran this get function uh, for this ID, which was either a new um, UUID or the custom short. I mean, obviously, since it's a new UUID, you won't find anything in the database, right? So that means it's talking about only the custom shortener that the user has passed. So it's checking only that. So if the value is there, something is there, it's not equal to a completely empty string that you then you want to say return c dot status 
fiber dot status forbidden json fiber dot map and you want to give out the error sorry uh, the error has to be inside the map <coughs> and this is how you write the error the error is will be your custom shot is already in use <coughs> put a comma at the end now um, since we have some more time remaining in this video, what I'll do is I'll do a couple of other things to clean up, which is basically checking the expiry. Let's say body dot expiry is twenty four hours. Default expiry of twenty four hours already been we're setting, and <clears throat> we want to set this. Um, now we want to set in our database the entire value uh, for that ID. So what we'll do is we'll say error r dot set database dot ctx comma id comma body dot url comma. So uh, in case uh, I'll actually I'll just explain to you what's happening here. What I'm doing here, right? So in your database. Uh, you already know that Redis gives you access to get and set. Get means get and set means uh, you're actually setting some value for and, and Redis is a key value database. Uh, so that means for some key, you'll have some value. Now for your ID, uh, database called dot context is just for accessing that particular database. ID is the actual key and you're setting some values. You're setting the body URL. And, uh, uh, by the way, ID here means the, um, <clears throat> the custom short URL or the new ID. So when you get the uh, shortened URL at the end, you'll have an ID at the end, right? That what one, two, three, four, the uh, unique ID, or it could be the custom uh, URL that you'll send A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, whatever that you want to send, uh, you want it to be. And so what we want to do is we want to store that in the database. We want to say that for that ID, this is the actual URL, which, uh, you know, in your in the body that you'll send, right? Saying that this is the actual link that I want to shorten, the real link, which uh, the program needs to redirect to. That will be in your body.url, make sense? And here you want to also have the expiry <coughs> for how long is that link? So you'll say 3600 into time dot second. <coughs> and as you know that uh, for Golang everywhere, when we run some function like this, like a database function, you can expect an error sometimes and you want to check the error in the next time itself. So you'll say turn dot c dot status. Fiber dot status internal server error. Uh, actually, you don't want this code to be there. As in, just it should be just status internal server error. So remove one status. This is what happens if you let the autocomplete uh, from um, VS Code take over. It makes a lot of mistakes for you. I try to avoid it, but uh, a lot of uh, the people watching my videos, they have so many um, plugins installed that they want me also to use it so that they kind of feel at home when they watch my videos. So I, that's why I use it. So you have fiber.map and then you have error, unable to connect to server. Right. So as you can see, we've done quite a bit in this uh, video. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll actually create the response that will go out from this function. And we'll do some uh, logic for the rate uh, remaining as in the rate limiting and all that part. And then we'll set the rate and we'll uh, also create our own custom shot at the end. And that's the response that we'd send back from this function. And uh, after that, the only work that will be remaining will be for creating those Docker files and Docker Compose files. And then we'll test the program and then uh, we're done. Uh, so there's not a lot remaining now. Uh, we've done quite a bit in this video. <laughs> so if you've reached this far, thank you for watching. That's amazing. You, you must be learning quite a bit. Uh, do check out the other tutorials on this channel. Do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when more awesome content like this comes out. Thank you for watching and then see you in the next episode. Bye.